Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, Corey here, Mad Rats, Industrial Customs, everything. Working on that 66 Dragon Wagon, our 66 Chevy 2 Nova Wagon. Been having a hell of a time rerouting these lines. If you remember, we had a, a remote filter, oil filter system on this because the headers are so much in the way and uh, the previous owner had the uh, rubber lines hard, hard on the headers. And uh, I see why now. Uh, doesn't make it right. Got to do it right way. And uh, let me show you what we got right now. Um, turn you around here. So, previously that wire was coming straight down and laying off on this header app to keep it from burning through, which probably worked. I don't know if you ever drove it that way. And I am at my wits end. I've been through several different iterations of AN fittings. I've got these adapters that come off and everything I put on that hits or touches the header. Um, not this one that's right there so much. Um, I've only got, not this one so much, but this one. Um, it's because the header goes up and it leaves no room for a 90 or anything without it bottoming out on that. And I can't even tighten it properly. So I got to thinking, I'm like, you know what, this, to all the haters out there, this is probably <clears throat> make you laugh, but <clears throat> I'm running that for right now. I've got a really close... I've got a really close, let me see if I can, so you can still see this, um, 90 coming that will basically eliminate this over here, which I did with this pipe. So it'll tuck it up closer and hopefully only come out to about here and 90 over. And if it does that, I'll have enough of an air gap. And the other problem is pressing the fitting on the end of the hose will I be able to curve it between the pan and you know under the the exhaust right here because I mean this isn't a lot of room when you got a hose that's as big as two of my fingers so um I've been having problems here let me grab let me show you sorry about that make you dizzy these 90s this is the end that would bolt up there ah it's hard to get any light up in here this bolts up in there and where do you run the hose you know i run it this close to the flex pipe so i've got a shorter one of these that'll be about like that i've got a 45 coming but it won't be here till next week i can't wait till next week um, I'll just have to change ends and I've got, well, I've got this 90. Which I bought for the other side, but when it's on there, it bumps into this. And you can't turn it far enough without it running straight out into the pan. So that's the problem I'm running into. If I can get rid of this... You know, it'd be nice if I could, this adapter, if I could get rid of that and this be up higher over here, then I got a chance to turn it far enough to clear the pipe and clear the pan. Um, but I'm running this for right now because if this doesn't work, I can't wait around the new one that's coming that'll screw in eliminating this adapter. I won't be here till mid next week. Um... The 45 will be here this tomorrow or the next day. Um, but if that doesn't work, I'm screwed. Because it's my last resort, except for this. It's got a 90 on it. I put an AN fitting on that end. And it's basically exactly what the hose was doing. It's basically exactly what the hose was doing. Except for the hose was the thing touching. Now it's metal. So follow my thoughts on this. I'm, there's going to be haters. I need different headers. You know, again, I'm dealing with what I was dealt with. This is what I got. 
I can't throw a bunch of money at this. I'm already spent too much money on all of these. These suckers are, you know, 10, 15 bucks a piece. And as you can see, oh, that not that one. I had that one from a different project. As you can see, I got these, I got these, I got that. I got another fitting over here. I got some more over there. I got. Some, I mean, I've, I've bought a few extras that I don't need. And I scratch them, trying to use them and make them fit and whatever, so I can't take them, send them back. Eh, yeah, I'll find them for another project. The point is, I got about $200 now in hose and everything where it was only going to be about 110 bucks, 120 bucks. So, if the another one comes and it sits up far enough and comes out, I'm going to run that because it'll be nice and close and tight and it'll, it'll won't be, hopefully won't be touching anything. Maybe the pan. I don't mind if it's touching the pan other than it might wear, um, but not heat because this is the line that comes out of the motor. So this is already, already going to be hot oil. Okay. So this is hot oil going back over around through with all these up to the filter. It's got time to cool. It's got time to cool through the dual, you know, filter setup. And then when it comes back, it'll come back along this frame rail. And unfortunately, because <laughs> there's no other way to do it with these stupid headers, it'll come down under these freaking headers in front here and up into there come off the 45 and over i'm hoping i'm hoping i'm hoping i'm hoping i'm hoping 45 and over so that'll be the cool going back into the motor hovering here boy it's a horrible setup um these headers should have been bent closer to each other ran better you know in today's technology maybe they got better headers i'm gonna have to look into it if these were tighter up over here and and snugged up in and then came into the, the collector here um this would be back above four inches and there'd be nothing but clearance here you could almost run a filter except for obviously right there you'd bump into it but it'd have clearance for all of this to come out and run properly this sucker is just really in the wrong place so that's what i'm doing today is dealing with that because i got to get this thing moving um the thing about what i'm doing right now i'm using all the same ends as the other adapters that are coming so when the other adapters come i can just literally unscrew these put the new adapters in and screw onto it i don't have to change hose ends or nothing like that because they're all going to have um these on where what i was going to have before this goes up into the adapter which is really hard to get at with the two of them side by side now these are going to go up on the remote filter this way and bolt into the filter and run down. So these will be on top. I took the brass fitting you saw and the pipe. Um, that's where I got the idea. I took the brass fitting off and I saw the pipe and I'm like, well, geez, if I had a longer pipe, I could clear that header better. And uh, okay, well, we'll try that. So I took the stuff that was up there on the, oh, the remote filter setup, taking that off. And putting what I was putting here up there, up there. So um, hopefully it works. I hate, I hate half-assing stuff like this. I do, but there's a, a rhyme and reason sometimes to doing it because there's absolutely, positively no other option. These headers are, if they're big block headers, I don't know why. <sighs> Is, you know, is this motor that built or was the motor that was in here that built? And then the guy, you know, did it have a big block in it at one time? And the guy bought adapters to put a small block in? I, I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm dealing with a lot of I don't knows. So, that's what I'm doing today. That's just the update. You know, it's been in here. I had it running before Christmas. And uh, now it's after New Year's. Is that right? I'll have to go back and look. It all blends blends together working on this here and there. Um, but I had it running. And that's when I decided, well, if I'm going to move it and have it run for any length of time, I can't have that header melting that hose and then pissing oil everywhere. So I'm doing that. Um, let me turn you around here real quick again. And I ran that other tranny hose up closer that was wrapped around this header. That's what we're working on today, and uh, maybe, I guess I've dropped that enough that it don't work with the crap, um, maybe, just maybe, 
be able to get her moving today. I don't know, I probably said this before, I'll say it again. I, I still gotta I still gotta crank this tire in. It's way, way out of alignment. Just gotta get it close so I ain't squealing and howling when I'm trying to move it around in the parking lot. So um yeah, I get this moving under its own power. I'm not necessarily gonna be driving it very far because the alignment's way out of whack, but if I can get it moving under its own power and find out if it, you know, holds good oil pressure once it warms up, make sure there's no major coolant or oil leaks or anything like that. Doesn't overheat, doesn't get hot. Um, maybe I'll set up an appointment to go ahead and get this thing aligned. I'm going to get it as close as I can with a tape measure. And then, uh, we'll get an alignment done on it. And I can move it around. And then if it moves and drives decent under its own power, well, we still got to worry about the gas tank. So I have no idea what's in there. We're going to risk it. Got several filters. I'm going to put a couple gallons back in there. Do some of this and see if, um, <laughs> see if it'll... Oh, as plugged up as that fuel line was running down the damn frame rail. Ah, what's the sending unit look like? I should just blow some air in it, unhook it real quick and blow some air in it. Let's see. I might do that today too. So, all right, next time you see this thing, we'll have it wired or plumbed up. And hopefully everything correctly plumbed up. And then um, hopefully getting ready to... I'll either be coming back and getting ready to pull this thing out or I'll be coming back and showing you how shitty of a fuel system I got. <laughs> Pray for me. All right, we'll see you in a bit. All right, let's take a look and see how we did here. So what I had to do, that header wrap came in handy. So yeah, we still got something touching but at least it ain't a rubber hose it's metal and again like i said earlier this is the return this is the line going to the filter so it's coming out of the motor it's already hot coming out of the motor if this heats it up any it's going to heat it up and have a chance to cool as it goes through the lines um and up to the filter and back and then i think that 45 is really going to work good because uh Oh, there. Because <laughs> that 90, it, it, it would benefit from coming down some. And then, yeah, it's close. But then they, they meet over here and they come up. And there's a nice clamp there. Put a clamp there. Grommets through the wall. I left a little extra in case I have to trim them down. Um, just in case I can move that. If the 90 that's coming for this over here, and I can come up through that spot and down and over, um, I might need a little extra. So I left some. So yeah, that's what we're doing right now. And then I got it all plumbed up up top. I'm just going to change the filters and put some oil in it and put some gas in it. Probably wait till tomorrow. It's getting later today. Um, probably going to grab a couple of gas cans to go home with. And in the morning I can stop and get fuel and get three or four gallons in this thing. I was going to say two gallons, but who knows. Uh, three or four gallons should be enough to see what's going on and put some um, Lucas in there to break it up and hopefully it'll fire off and go so fingers crossed oh and I tried to adjust this tire behind me you can see it's better that is completely adjusted and it still ain't right it's still turning in and uh, it's still turning that way I have to do a little investigating see if this was hit and something moved Tires seem to be in the same spot, so I don't know. I'll have to do a little finagling and figure that out. Always something, guys. But at least even with this the way it's sitting, I can at least move it in and out. So score. Next time we'll be uh we'll be firing it up. So I'm just gonna button up a couple of things tonight. I'm out of here.
until the manana. All right, so new filters on, the new ends on we talked about. I'm assuming that this with all the lines is an extra quart um, over the regular filter and the ex extended tank that's underneath there, extended pan that's underneath there is probably a six quart pan. So I put seven quarts in. So we do have oil in, seven quarts. And that includes priming both of these. I filled both of those. Don't know if this motor's been run or not. So, I, you know, I just told it's rebuilt. That doesn't mean it wasn't run. But I put zinc in it, a zinc additive, just in case. And being old and sitting around, who knows? Maybe it just needs it. And uh, I primed it, primed the carburetor. So maybe it'll run enough to prime the fuel from the, and I put two gallons in, I put two gallons in the tank. Um, I put a new washer on the drain plug that was dripping. So the lines are all hooked up. One thing I still need to do to drive it is to uh, weld the uh, <coughs> throttle linkage up. Got too late last night. And I thought, well, let's get it running first to make sure we got oil pressure and that nothing's leaking and crazy and kooky. I can run the throttle there. And it idled fine before. Um, I'm going to find uh, timing again because I did move the cap a little bit. Uh, messing around with some other stuff. So I think we're going to fire it up again. And uh, see what the gas looks like. And that we got gas coming through and what our fuel pressure looks like. Oh, and this will be the first time that I've got the vacuum set up to the uh, vacuum advance. So, am I missing anything? Oil in, additive in, gas in, lines are on, lines are tightened. Yeah, I think we're ready to fire it up. So, all right, let me set this down and set it up so we can watch. All right. All right, here we go. Let's hope.
is. 45 pounds of pressure, oil pressure. Full charging, almost 14 volts, 13.8. Couldn't hardly see, but it was just below the 14. And uh, we got gas. Let me grab you. Smells a little varnishy. <laughs> but we got gas. The problem is we got a leak. You see it dripping there. I don't know if this is any good anymore because it's been off the vehicle for 20 something years, 30 years. I used this on my tunnel ram when I was 21 years old, 30 years ago. Yeah, and I just gave up my age. I'm 51. And that is leaking. And so is that one a little bit. So uh, I'm going to find a better fitting for this. Because this is bottomed out. And I don't know if that's, I don't remember if that's the right way to do it. But it's leaking there. So I'll let the pressure die down a little bit. I'll pull that fitting off. I'll find a better fitting. Um, I thought I put all new washers under there with the kit, but I am going to ch double check. I don't know if that's washers or if that's misaligned. So, yeah, we good though. We're good. We got gas, so, and, I mean, it's yellowy looking. I got some additive in there, Lucas, but uh, that's probably a bit on the varnishy side. Um, so, the more we run it, the better it'll get, but at least it's clear. So, all right, let me uh, dig through my piles and see what I got for a different setup on the and to see if I got the gaskets for those little washers and uh, see if there's a better way I can do that. I'll be back. Now here's a, a little tip of the day. So this is what I had in there. And you can see that's more of an AN fitting style threading. And it, it fits in there perfect and it threads but it's just a little on the loose side, but it does thread. That's what I had in there with the, and when you got tape on it, um, it doesn't feel loose like that. Now, you set that next to that one, the one on the right looks way bigger, don't it? Well, that one is MPT pipe thread, and it's hard to get started, but once you get it started, see, it's still a little loose, but it only goes to about there and then it seals so i had the wrong one in easy to do i'll put some thread tape on there and uh we should be good all right that gas So this one's staying. Had it out. And uh, two things. One, really hard to even try to get it tightened because it doesn't swivel. It swivels very tight. And it swings and hits um, here. Two, to get it lined up so it's not touching this, I couldn't get the hose, this, what I was afraid of, onto it. Um, it all have to be assembled off the vehicle and, and whatever. 
So if that's going to be touching, it's light aluminum. I would rather have steel touching and brass. And this one's, you know, it's got an air gap, but it's, it's tight. It's close. This is an improvement. The 45 versus coming like this and running along the headers. It just juts out. And this is, uh, this is the important one. This is the one that comes from the filters into the motor. So we want this to stay as cool as possible as it goes up. So I might have to shorten the hose. I'm going to see if I can take up some slack here um, because it was curving like that and sat nice. Now that it's coming down, we got this 45. I might have to cut it and then re reattach the end. I don't think I have enough room here to, to add it. So there we go, guys. That is how it stand until someday in the very distant future I pull the motor and get different headers. Because that, at least it's the oil coming out. So, has plenty of chance to cool. I might even have to run a cooler because then it would come from that into an oil cooler and back and it'd be fine. It'd stay out of the motor. But for now, we're just parking lot driving it. As soon as this part's done and I'm gonna get the throttle today I've been saying that in a few videos I'm gonna fix that throttle fix that throttle I ordered a pedal to do cable I ordered everything to do cable and uh, through AutoZone they had a pedal that I wanted at a price I needed thought it'd be here by the weekend and yesterday I got an, uh, an email saying they canceled the order no explanation. I'm just assuming that, because uh, I used the coupon and all this kind of stuff for it, I'm assuming that somehow they accidentally let the coupon work and I ended up, you know, getting too much money off or something, which, bait and switch, sounds like shit to me. But, um, yeah, so now I have no throttle cable. That's why I haven't welded the other one, because I'm just like, I don't want to put that on and then I have to take it off again. And But I need to move this car. And, all right, run better. Out. <laughs> Need my bump hat on. Yeah, run better. Clears everything better. Out of the way. I know, I'm not a big fan of that. But it is my only option. It really, really is. Until we buy different headers, so... That'll be that. Well, another day, another dollar in the shop. Another dollar lost, I guess. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, weekend's gone by. Went to a big car swap meet last minute this weekend. Um, buddy of mine and I. and yeah, As you know, we've got the Nova up and running. But I wasn't real thrilled with how the car was acting. I mean, that thing had been, if it'd been on there as long as it seems like this car hasn't been running. Um, I did a, a quickie down and dirty rebuild on it. But the part that doesn't come in, the rebuild kit has to do with the vacuum secondaries. I don't know if the vacuum diaphragm works, but just revving it up and running it here in the garage and letting it warm up and playing around with the carb a little bit. Um, it's super reactive, which is great. But I have a major flat spot when I try to go wide open. It, it bogs and then opens up, which I'm thinking has something to do with that vacuum secondaries. And um, I just got to thinking about it. And I'm like, you know, if I could get a different carb, that'd be great. We went to the swap meet. I looked around. There was some stuff and this. And everybody wanted a lot of money for them. And, you know, like a double pumper would really be great. Get rid of the vacuum secondaries. And uh, came across this old timer we'd been... Uh, working on race cars and drag raced like I don't know what did he say he was 77 years old and he drag raced for 50 years 55 years and he'd been rebuilding carbs as a side business for 54 years and he had a uh, what's on there now is a 750 Holly vacuum secondary not a double pumper which obviously if it's not a vacuum secondary if it's a vacuum secondary usually they're not I think they're always not um, I'm not completely literate on that stuff, but he had a 700 double pumper, Holly Performance Series, older, looks about like the one I'm taking off as far as condition, but he said, I completely rebuilt that, 
and it's all ready to go. You just got to adjust the air bleeds for your engine. And I said, well, it's got a 750 on there now, which seems fine. I pulled the plugs once. It's not following the plug. So as it sits right now, that 750 seems fine. Don't know. Wide open, driving, throttle chops, all that. Don't know. But as of this moment in the shop, not blowing any black smoke, nothing like that. So it doesn't seem like it's too rich for that 750. Is it 700? I'm okay if it's, you know, a little on the leaner side. You know, whatever. I'm not building a perfect perfection drag car and he said actually it'll be an improvement um drivability will be uh, maybe a little leaner he said but because of the secondaries being the double pumper and mechanical he says it's actually a major improvement on how it runs if it liked that 750 it's gonna love this 700 okay so decent price got it for 140 bucks i mean the guy down the way had one same exact story of having it completely rebuilt by a buddy of his who knows what he's doing and he wanted 250 but it's basically the same car. So I think this guy's word after talking to him for a while. It seemed like he knew what he was doing. He was actually swapping out of an old race car with um, a short bus, school bus pulling it. And uh, that was full of mechanics, tools, and stuff. So you could tell that was his rig for going racing when he was you know younger. And then he turned it into his swapping rig. So he seemed, he seemed believable. Well, guess what? It wasn't recently rebuilt if it was, just like all the other stories I've been getting on stuff. Because I get it back here, and I put it on, and I'm like, I feel looking at it closer. I guess I should have looked closer when I was there, but it was hot, and I was sweaty, and it was towards the end of the day, and I was just getting, <sighs> feeling icky. But I noticed, I mean, it probably was in and out of his swap trailer a bunch, so it had a bunch of dirt and dust and stuff like that. So I cleaned it up real good today, and uh, and I and I tested as best I could the uh oh the accelerator pumps make sure the both squirters were working the double pumpers and you know they moved and flipping it over upside down uh, the button on them looked new which means it looked like a new diaphragm that didn't it wasn't all corroded and stuff from years of sitting around so he, he seemed believable well I get it back here and I get it on the, the car and I think I'm gonna have to pull it apart because I think it's been a long time because the front accelerator pump Number one, I think he's got he had it adjusted wrong. It was only moving a fraction of what it's supposed to, and because it sat like that forever, um, I th think it wrecked the diaphragm from not being run and used because the, the front squirter's not squirting. Um, I can put gas down the carb and fire the car up, and it runs for a second, and then it dies right away. It runs itself out of gas. So, so yeah, let me turn it around here. You can see what I'm talking about. So that's the new double pumper. You can see back there, there's the other pumper. For the secondaries and the primaries, I've loosened this up a bunch, but it literally is, I can't, I can't pump it. Which means, and this was set all the way down onto that. So it was set basically in full pump. And you can see I can push up on it, but it just falls the full pump. So, I got a bunch of spare parts um, from that uh, auction I mentioned earlier that I went to a few months ago and I got a carburetor, a box full of new and used carburetor parts. And there's another, another diaphragm in there. So, I guess what I'm doing now is pulling this car back off now that it's full of gas. Great. And uh, I'm going to empty the gas out of it and um, take this bowl off. And take, I might not have to take the bowl, but I have to turn it upside down, which all the gas is going to come out. I'm tempted to pull, I'm going to pull the bowl. I'm going to double check the float. I'm going to blow some carb cleaner through the passages because if it's been sitting a while, maybe there's dirt in there. I blew from that side down and maybe I'll get in here and blow from this side up. And uh, it's always something, guys. So I took the old timer at his word. I mean, he had a bunch of carbs there. He had a blower there with carbs on it. And he said he built all that stuff. And the blower was what used to be on his car. And, Seemed believable, but he didn't mention that if he had rebuilt this, it was 10 years ago and it's been sitting around ever since. So I, I guess I got to do my due diligence and go through it anyways. But it is a much better carb as you can see there. 
Come on, focus in. It's a uh, Holly Performance is what that says. And and those are their better carbs. They're just built better and a lot more care was taken back in the day on those. I like the old the old Holly stuff. I just I just wish I was buying what I was told I was buying. So that's the update. I'll be back. I'm gonna go through the carb and check it out and let you know what I find. Yeah, I might as well show you this too. I'm just gonna take the bowl off here instead of the whole carb and let it drain. And number one, how long has it been since gas has touched them bolts? If I remember right, these are actually open to open inside the bowl. They go through and the bowl's right there. Granted, this is higher than the float, but you'd still get splash off on there. I mean, that's why it looks the way it does. <laughs> but the freaking shit coming out of there is brown as can be. Look at the stain on that rack. It's not even yellow. So, oh, yeah. I mean, this is some yellow gas I got coming, but that stuff's nasty. So, I need to get something on there to catch that better. <sighs> Bunch of crud in the bowl, I bet. Brand new, he said. Fully rebuilt, he said. <laughs> oh my god. New gasket. It's the new style of gasket, so it was rebuilt. How long ago, I don't know, but look at all the garbage in here. I gotta completely disassemble and clean this and this metering block. And then, uh, maybe, just maybe, it'll breathe. I think I got another one of those. I don't I think I got another one of these, but this it didn't tear up. So, I'll take it apart easily and clean it, and hopefully it'll seal again. Take apart that needle and seat. I'm sure it's letting gas in. Oh, that's what I get for trusting people. I'm too trustworthy. I'm too trusting, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, see what I was talking about up there? The bolts, they go through. For them to rust like that, they haven't had gas splashed on them in a long time. Or it was, because I cleaned those before I put them in. If gas never... Now, if you never ran anything through it, it wouldn't have rusted. I mean, that is just... Thick. Alright. Time to clean it up. Man! I'm tired of trusting people and getting screwed. You think I'd learn? Oh, I don't know what the hell happened there. I was recording and I wasn't recording. So, again, let me back up. That's the accelerator pump. Look at the garbage in there. Not that it matters. It doesn't change its ability. Look at how corroded and... I mean, that thing has been sitting a long time. If you rebuilt that, you'd have cleaned it. This is the diaphragm I took out. And see, I saw a shiny. You can see a little wear mark on there. I saw a shiny, and I'm like, all right, usually they look all like that. You can't see any of this. You can only see that little nipple. But they usually look that cruddy on here if they're old. Not always, but it's a good telltale sign. This is a brand new one I have from a kit. And see, it's... See how it flexes? It's a diaphragm. It moves in and out. You know, it pushes in. Okay, brand new. This one, I don't know if you can do it because I was recording earlier and I wasn't recording. But listen. Can you hear that? It don't plunge no more. It's brittle as hell. It's falling apart in my hands. So that's why that wasn't doing anything. So all the garbage, hot rodding's fun, isn't it? Buy a hot rod. It'll relax you, having a hobby. 
nothing relaxing about hot rodding. <laughs> I still love it though. I've been doing it for too long not to. But this is the stuff you run into. Welcome to my world, people. And I know it's not just my world. This runs a lot of people run into this stuff. I just know so many people that never run into this stuff. That's the thing. How come how come there's those ones that never have this problem? Everything always works out aces. They pull a, a carburetor out of the mud, they hose it off with a garden hose, and it runs like a brand new carburetor. Me, I get one said to be rebuilt, looking halfway decent, pull it apart, and the mud's all on the inside. So, big improvement. Hosed out, cleaned out, shot through the passages, we're all good. Took a little second for this one to actually shoot out, so there's something a little clogged in there, but now we're clean. Clean, clean, clean. So, I'll uh, wipe it down with the rag and it'll be all good. I can start putting it back together, that part back together, but I'm gonna pull the rest of the carb off. So, oh, and I still gotta go through this needle and seat and see how that's working. I could by hand, but <laughs> Woo, she's salty. She's definitely salty. I got the GoPro on the dash here. We'll flip back and forth from that if I can figure out how to do that. Let me set you down. Do a U-turn here. power guys I'm just running it first I got nothing to brace on none of these seats are bolted down one hand and the steering is loose as shit feeling the tires are from going different directions just come down here and I'm gonna stab it a little bit just to see what happens brake action Too far, I only got like two gallons in. Oh, yeah, I'm pulling hard to the left. She wants to, she just wants to go left. There you go, guys. That was just a real quick, real quick maiden voyage. I think we got things starting to get things dialed in here. A little more tuning on the carburetor, and I'm sure we'll be all right. So, I'm gonna have to set you down because it takes two hands to pull in my garage and my tight little space. All right.
I'll tell you what, guys. I know that was just a shorty. I pulled it out briefly the other day, and I didn't even make it to the end of the driveway. It just seemed really doggy. And uh, I'm like, man, it was really pulling hard, and the tires were rubbing. So I pulled it, I backed it back in, and uh, today I did a, I oh, tried to uh, just adjust the toe in on on the alignment. And it's better, but now it's like really loose. I mean, one tire's going one direction, the other's going the other, so it really wants to go back and forth. It's, it's really hard to keep it going straight. Um, but that's our true first get on it. I'd really like to stand on her hard. We'll have to get her aligned. Um, I'm impressed. I think I was wrong on the... Well, we got to see what this has for rear end gears, but... Uh, it's definitely more than 350 horse. I can almost bet that. I was saying 300, 350, I'd be happy, but I'd bet it, I'd bet to say it's over four. Um, she's, you know, now that the I've got the vacuum set on on the carburetor right, I've got the the idle set pretty close to being right. Raise it just a little. This cam seems to really want. Um, there's not a lot of vacuum there. When I set the vacuum, I'm used to setting them at like 15, um, but they'll tell you a huge lift cam does not work with like vacuum brakes because they, they draw less than 12, 12 uh, pounds on the vacuum gauge. And usually them brake boosters need, I guess, don't quote me on it, I'm no expert. I think as long as you can maintain 12, you have vacuum brakes, anything less than that, you don't. And I was having a hard time getting 12 on the vacuum. I was adjusting that car back and forth, back and forth. And uh, it likes to ride right around 10 or 11. Um, once it really warmed up and was good, I, I maybe 12. So, um, but you'd rev it up and she dropped to 10 real quick. <laughs> um, so I'm saying this is a healthier cam. And I've got some, you know, I got that 400 horse small block in my, in my 64. And uh, I run power brakes on that, and that, that gets 14, you know, PSI. But it's a roller cam. Oh, I, uh, I borrowed an endoscope and looked down the hole because I was going to change that brass gear over we talked about on the distributor if it was a full roller cam. It's not a roller. It's just a hydraulic tappet cam. So hydraulic flat tappet, not a roller. So... I'm even more impressed how this thing revs up and how this thing reacts. It's pretty impressive. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Um, I know it was a short, little short run, but that's all we got for now. It's, uh, there's no money left for this project. I've reached my goal. I can pull it in and out. I'm going to fill a couple of gas cans tonight. So I can have gas and not worry about it running out of gas. Um, but we've reached our goal of being able to pull it in and out and under its own power. Um, if you look in the back there, I've got the seats stored in here. Because I tried putting them in here and getting rid of these racing buckets that I'm sitting in as a racing bucket. But my head almost hits the ceiling and there's no brackets under them yet. And because they're so padded... With the roll cage being right here, the cross brace, um, I can't put them back very far. I am jammed up against the steering wheel with my head really close to the ceiling. It's not not what I would want. So I'm probably going to have to, I mean, I don't care about roll cage. And all it is, I'll turn it around here and show you. I have these unbolted and sitting in here because I got room, no room to put them, but they're unbolted because I was going to put the others in. But that brace right there that comes off, you can see it's right in the back of the, right in the back of the seat. And those seats back there, when they're here, they're padded, so they're about this much thicker than these seats. And right now, with these seats all the way back up against the brace, I'm in a comfortable seating position with my knee just slightly bent, full access to going full throttle. Um, I like the steering wheel. 
I like the steering wheel here. I mean, I'd like to be able to come a little closer with the adjustable seats, but this is pretty much where I'd like to sit. You know, you got good cool arm out the window positioning. You know, you're not up here with, with that in the way. I mean, you can sit here and I, I like, you know, these open. I like driving and just kind of doing doing this. You know, it's like a oh shit handle. But uh so I mean I'm in a comfortable position right now where I'm at. So I'm gonna what I'm gonna end up doing is um just bolting these racing buckets in. It the, the only problem I got with the racing buckets is how small this door opening is. Um where the bucket and it's a bucket. It comes up. It's not like it's a flat seat you're sitting on. You have to come over a ledge and in to the seat to hold you there. It's tough with this small door and me being a fatter than I used to be when I was younger. But with the door and where the steering wheel is to get in and then to get out, you got to roll out and kind of whatever up and over. And uh, it's a little bit on the tight side for a daily driver. Kind of takes fun out of it. I was hoping those, those, I mean, the ones back there, they really hold you in place just like these, but it uses padding. So it'd be easier to get in and out because you're sitting on the padding and rolling in instead of a hard plastic bucket. So things to think about, but now I'm, it always happens to me. I can't leave well enough alone. I have to get the Nomad done for my brother he wants to start driving it winter down here in florida is like spring early summer everywhere else in the nation so this is hot rod season and um i'll start videos on that and what i did before i started my youtube you know recording youtube i didn't record working on dads but i'll show what i've done thus far and then it got put on the back burner because we were ordering a bunch of parts and then things snowballed for me and what i was dealing with so i promised my brother when he bought it i said let me finish i just got this nova it's got to be able to move in and out i will finish your car when i'm done with this and uh so when i get done with his car then we'll get the nova done um throw it on the back of the ramp truck and take her over to uh get an alignment done That'll be the key. Get the alignment done and go from there. And then I can tinker with everything else. And with the alignment done, all I gotta do is go get plates for it, throw insurance on it, and I can, you know, take it to a cruise in or whatever. And, and uh, yeah, that's what we're working with. So thanks for stopping by. Thanks for checking it out. The old dragon wagon is one step closer to hitting the road. It's alive. Don't forget to subscribe, hit like, comment, Anything you see, hear, think about, but be nice. We're all in this together. We're all hot rodders in the same brotherhood. Let's help each other out and let's be nice. See you next time. Yeah, so just a one more time quick vid. When we got this, I'll show the befores. But uh, come a long ways. And she's far from done, guys. But uh, the gas is cleaning up. Look at that. It's more yellow. I'll change that in the back filter. Um, we got the wires on now. The new distributor. Got the vacuum advanced hooked up. We did a new fuel pump. All new fuel lines. Starting here into the pump and then from the pump up and into the carb. We got that carb we picked up at the swap meet and rebuilt. We got uh, the remote filter system dealt with. We got it plumbed underneath. We went ahead and uh, they had, the previous owner had changed that plug, thinking that's all he needed to do to change from a externally regulated to an internally regulated, but yet he still had the regulator hooked up. So what we did was trace the wires, found that it was still hooked up, got rid of the external, ooh, hot oil, got rid of the external regulator, and then you just do a jumper. We've got full voltage on the dash, batteries charging, Everything's good. We only had 10 volts before. We got 14 now, 13, 8, 14. Um, carb tuning. Went through and adjusted all the rockers several times. She's spot on now, guys. 
We're still running coolant in here because they haven't really drove it enough. We're still running coolant flush with water. We'll end up one more time. Um, we're going to flush that and then we'll put coolant in it. But uh, all this little running around we've been doing, it hasn't gone over 170 degrees yet. So she's running fairly cool, which is good. So all those are all the things. And then, you know, I still need to get, you know, we painted the wheels. They were white. Now they're on here. The tires, I need different tires. These are ancient old anyways. Them suckers are expensive as crap. But I am going to uh, gonna have to get new tires. These are 215.75s. I think we need to run 205.60s. Would look good. And people recommend 205.60s. Because you can see how close that tire is to rubbing. Now that I towed it in. But when you turn and hit a bump, if you're in the middle of a turn, it's going to bump. A 205.60 will take care of that. Those are 325 50s in the back, 15s. Um, we need new ones of those. They're 30 years old. The windshield is water spotted so bad I can't budge it. So we're going to try that Suds Factory stuff. You probably see it all over YouTube and all over Facebook. They say it cleans water spots like nothing. Well, guess what? We're going to give it a try. Um, well, I've got a glass polishing kit. I might give it one go with the glass polisher and see if that fixes it. If not, we'll buy it gonna bolt the seats in so after this car gets done let me back up after this car gets done then tires alignment bolt the seats down get it registered finish flushing the coolant Probably changed oil after we run it a little bit more. I'd like to put like 100 miles. It's brand new oil, brand new filters. I'd like to put 100 miles on it and then change the oil one more time. Just because I have no idea what state of this motor's in. Get this cleaned up. And then decide if I'm bolting these down. I keep saying bolting seats down. Decide if I'm bolting these down or if I'm cutting that brace off of the roll cage to run the new seats I bought that I'd rather have. Even though I sit a little tall in them. I don't know. Might have to put them back up for sale. Or who knows? They might look good in my 64 pickup. Even though I have a really nice bench in there that I like. They might look really good in there. But then I'd have to get a center console. Hmm. We'll see. There's where we're at, guys. There's where we're at. So. Oh, and the grill wasn't on. We got the grill on now. And. That's what we've done so far since we bought it. And it all, so far, has worked out. Thought we bought a roller. And when you know nothing about a motor, I don't care what anybody says, especially if the previous owner ain't the one standing there telling you about it. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, it's rebuilt. Well, you got no proof. And it was sitting there with the, the, the valve covers weren't even bolted on. They were sitting there. The distributor was sitting, a different distributor was sitting there with no cap on it, just a rotor showing, no plug wires, um, and the car with a bag wrapped on it. You have no idea what condition this thing's in. Pulled the valve covers, and yeah, it looked decent, and you pray, but I bought it under the pretense that you have no idea if this thing runs. They could have started it and screwed up. Um, the first start even on a rebuild and that's why it's been sitting for so many years the tranny could be shot um, This one shifts hard seems like it's got a shift kit in it It's definitely a manual valve body because you take off and drive and it's like good god this thing's Like I said, I made it to the end of the driveway and I'm like this doesn't seem like it has any power Well manual valve body put it in first gear and it's like holy shit In drive you're in third gear because it doesn't downshift by itself manual valve body You got to physically put it in first Physically put it in second, and physically put it in third. Even though it's an automatic. It does not automatically shift. There's no clutch. For those of you who don't know, you can do a valve body where it does not automatically shift. You just have to use the shifter on the floor, first, second, third, third, second, first. Wherever you put it is where it goes. It will not. Like some cars, if you're going too fast, you take it out of drive into second, it will not go into second because you're going too fast. Now, this one will go into second if you're at 100 miles an hour. <laughs> so, manual valve body automatic. Yeah, so that's where we're at. Maybe down the road we'll have some more pictures of uh, more video of some updates. We'll keep on it, you know, as we update. But next project, 55.
Chevy Nomad. That'd be the one. Been in my family longer than me. So, brother bought it from dad, now it's his. Dad's owned it since 1965. I was born in 71. Hmm. Wonder if I was ever conceived in that. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. <laughs> All right. Once again, thanks for watching. Please, if you can, hit that subscribe button down there, wherever that side dot sound. Hit that like button. Helps me out. I really want, I really would like, you know, to be able to keep doing stuff like this. If people want me to do it, then I'm going to keep doing it. And the only way to know if people want me to do it, if they're subscribing. Um, hopefully I'm getting better at the videos. Hopefully the information is better. Hopefully, you know, my personality's okay enough that you, you're willing to come back and check it out. So, oh, what a great li weight lifted off my shoulders today. Progress is fun. Hot rodding, all the aggravation and all the bitching I did earlier. <laughs> These, this is what makes it worth it. So. Thanks for hanging out, guys. And don't forget, we like to do them cheap. We like to do them easy. But no matter what you do, just keep on ranching. Your projects will come around. Have a good one. See you next time.